Welcome back to Bay Sunday. Please welcome the New York Times best-selling author of I Almost Forgot About You, Terry McMillan. She's the author of the best-selling book, Waiting to Exhale, How Stella Got Her Groove Back. So what inspired you to write this latest novel? I was primarily concerned about writing a story about a middle-aged woman who had done everything right from gone to the right schools, looks good on paper. She's a success and she's an optometrist in San Francisco mm -hmm. and, you know, raised her kids. She's divorced twice. And I just, I think I was more interested in inquiring about a woman who was bored with her life, even though she was successful in her chosen profession. She was just, it just wasn't doing it for her anymore. I know you have a lot of fans here in the Bay Area. Um, why did you choose San Francisco as the setting and the backdrop for this new book? I think just because I haven't set a book in San Francisco and I lived in the Bay Area for 25 years, um, it seemed right, mm -hmm. really right. right. And I got a chance to describe the Bay, the water, the housing, the communities, the neighborhoods, and um, the beauty of it, really juxtaposed with what was going on in my character's life. And, and you, you spent a lot of time in the East Bay. You studied journalism at Berkeley. What got you to basically take your career path from heading towards journalism to writing fiction? Well, when I was a journalism major at Cal, um, we used to have to write reviews of plays and concerts and things. and. I couldn't be bothered sometimes. Sometimes I didn't have the gas money to get there, and that was before BART. So I would just lie. <laughs> and then I found out that you could lie and people would believe it. Mm -hmm. And that's sort of how I started writing right. uh, fiction. Right. But I had better motives. <laughs> sure, yeah, and it led to a very successful career. Um, I think a lot of people wonder, when someone is writing fiction, how much of your personal anecdotes and your personal life perhaps seep into some of the novels that you write? Um, contrary to popular belief, not as much as, at least in my work, uh, not as much as people would think. Um, there might be a tinge of autobiographical thing, stuff in there, um, Stella, but only, you know, how Stella got a groove back, everybody thought, oh, it all happened, but it didn't. I finished that book before my ex-husband ever stepped foot in this country. Um, it was a way to, for me to give myself permission to do what men have been doing. So it was about the double standard. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, I write about characters that I either don't understand or I'm just curious about, but who are dealing with issues that I find important and valuable. And mostly to women, although not specifically for women. Mm -hmm. Because we read, a lot of us read books by men. I don't learn much, but... <laughs> <laughs> But I think reading books about women and our relationships, sure. sometimes there's a way to, I think, for us to understand ourselves even better. Right. And gives our, give ourselves more credit. And, and there are a lot of young writers out there who want to, to go into writing fiction. What would your best advice be to, to some of those people who are out there who are watching here today? Write as if no one's ever going to read it. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Because otherwise, you will suffer from, forgive the term, sounds crass, but literary constipation. Mm -hmm. You'll never be able to write a decent sentence hmm. without worrying about who's going to read it. And so if you write as if you're talking to a friend, um, and really that, you're, that no one's ever going to read it, you're, you, you liberate yourself emotionally, psychologically, and sometimes even spiritually. Mm -hmm. Because editing is the easiest part. Getting your story out, that's when it's more honest because you don't know if anyone's ever going to read it. Right. And you, you can be, you can trust your instincts more. But I try as a writer, as a fiction writer, I stay out of it. I am not writing about Terry McMillan. I disappear when I sit in front of that computer. And did you know early on that you, were, you had a gift for writing fiction? I still don't How think I have a about? gift. <laughs> I, think, I think all the people who have purchased your books would, would, would disagree with that, but yeah, sure. Um, no, I started writing poetry mm -hmm. by accident, and then it sort of evolved. But um, 
I don't know, I like, the, I like the power of storytelling because one of the things that I've learned is there are a lot of people that get on my nerves, myself included. Right. And this is a way for me to explore and develop and learn to respect other people and what they're going through because life can be hard and some of us think getting through problems and over the hills and dealing with the valleys is easy and it's not. And so I try to dramatize some of those times in our lives such that I develop a little bit more empathy. Well, Terry, if history is any indicator of what's gonna happen in the future, I almost forgot about you, should do very well in the bookstores. Thank you for joining us here this Thank morning. Thank you for having me. For more information about I Almost Forgot About You, log on to terrymcmillan.com. That's terrymcmillan.com. We'll be back with more Bay Sunday after this break.